Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. My name is Dimitrios Zekos. I'm an associate professor at UC Berkeley, and I would like to talk to you about the opportunities that arise when we use big data to learn more about landslides occurring during natural disasters. Hundreds to thousands of landslides may occur during a natural disaster, such as an earthquake, a hurricane, a tropical storm, or a monsoon. For example, more than 20,000 landslides occurred during the Gorkha earthquake in Nepal in 2015. And a year later, more than 30,000 landslides occurred during the Kaikoura earthquake in New Zealand. In 2017, Hurricane Maria caused more than 40,000 landslides in Puerto Rico. A year later, the combination of a monsoon followed by an earthquake resulted in topography that had that was full of landslide scars in Hokkaido, Japan. The landslides caused by these natural disasters are responsible for numerous deaths, significant infrastructure damage, they impact the economy, and they slow down the community's efforts to bounce back and restore the way of life for many years to come. While these events are certainly undesirable, they do represent a unique opportunity to understand how infrastructure responded to these extreme loads. These are spatially distributed, full-scale experiments of the geologic environment and our infrastructure. Our engineering practice, however, is not tuned to learn from these events. At least it is not tuned to the scale of the event and its geographic extents. If you look at the geotechnical engineering scientific literature, related to these events, you will find that for the most part, we tend to describe the events broadly and primarily qualitatively. And then we zoom in to a handful of landslides that we investigated more closely. There is a lot of information that is being lost from this process. Now, if you do ask a geotechnical engineer to analyze a landslide, they will most likely perform field mapping, drill boreholes, run tests in the laboratory, perform limit equilibrium or finite element analysis, and explain to you what happened and how you to fix it. You ask them about a second landslide and they will have to repeat the process. This is obviously useful, but it is also expensive. And the communities we live in expect more. Decision makers would like to know before the event what are the most critical areas where landslides will take place, how big are these landslides going to be, how far will they go, what will be the consequences on people's lives, lifelines, our roads, and our infrastructure. This is a challenge that we need to, to address. Fully leveraging lessons from these events will help us do better, and we can do better. We can now take advantage of advances in remote sensing and data acquisition and collect field data that was impossible to collect five or ten years ago. For example, new and upcoming satellite constellations are generating data at resolutions, spatial coverage, and frequency that is unprecedented. There are details that we can see from satellites now that we could not a few years back. We can use this imagery to map landslides not just in two dimensions, but in three dimensions. For example, in New Zealand, using stereo satellite imagery, our team was able to create a half a meter digital elevation model of the entire north part of the South Island of New Zealand before and after the 2016 Kaikoura earthquake. This is an area of 65,000 square kilometers, which is equivalent to the entire state of South Carolina. Using this data, we are able to get quantitative assessments of the numerous landslides that occurred during that event. We can also deploy unmanned aerial vehicles or drones to create truly high-resolution models of large areas. For example, in 2015, 
An earthquake in Lefkada, in Greece, caused more than 700 landslides along a 20-kilometer stretch of the west coast of the island. This footage was captured by fishermen that were fishing off the coast during the earthquake. It shows hundreds of landslides coming downhill, and the footage really resembles a battlefield. Luckily, the earthquake occurred in November, and nobody was at the beach at that time. Otherwise, hundreds of lives will have perished. We deployed UAVs and created a 3D model such as the one shown here, of nearly the entire coastline. This model has centimeter level resolution and allows us not only to accurately identify the landslides and estimate their size, volume, and how much they moved, but we can actually even characterize their rock mass. To do that, we developed scalable approaches using machine learning that allows us to detect fractures nearly automatically over large areas. We can also use UAVs equipped with multiple sensors to collect additional data. For example, infrared imagery can be used to assess the moisture content of the soil and rock mass, as we have done in the imagery shown for the Edenville Dam failure in Michigan this year. We have also used UAVs to collect data about the subsurface. For example, we have used UAVs to collect sewer velocity data of the ground. In the not so distant future, tireless, battery recharging, completely autonomous UAVs will be collecting spatially distributed subsurface data at rates that are now impossible. All this field data can be used to perform back analysis of not just a few, but of hundreds of landslides. This regional stability analysis, such as the one shown here, can consider the three-dimensional aspects of the environment and derive more reliable estimates of strength than current approaches. They can also be used for predictive modeling of future events so that we're ready for them. Last but not least, to monitor landslides, we can also use people as sensors. For the last three years, we have been tracking social media activity on Twitter related to landslides. We have been collecting about 50,000 tweets each year, analyzing them, aggregating them and data mining them to extract characteristics related to landslides. We are thus able to identify the location, size characteristics and consequences of thousands of landslides on the planet. This data gives us spatially distributed information about landslide susceptibility areas globally. Big data analytics allows us to better understand landslides that occurred during a natural disaster. They provide insights that we could not generate otherwise. They pave a new path to learning that will greatly complement the approaches we currently use in geotechnical engineering. And in doing so, will allow us to better protect the public and build more resilient infrastructure. With that, thank you very much for your time and attention.